We have seen how processes, both core and support, form the basis of operation of any organization, regardless of the nature of the industry. Does that mean, however, that there are no differences between processes in different industries, such as in the manufacturing versus service sectors? To address that question, let us first take a look at what we mean by a manufacturing or a service organization. Take, for example, an, org an automobile producer such as General Motors. Is this a manufacturing or a service company? Clearly, this company belongs in the manufacturing sector. They produce cars and trucks. Indeed, is there any doubt that a large automotive producer would be considered anything other than a quintessential manufacturing company? Now, does that mean that GM does not produce any services? Consider the last time I wanted to buy a car. I looked under my mattress and searched desperately for some stashed cash. Ultimately, I couldn't find anything, not even a bed bug. Thankfully, the dealer was able to get me some sort of financing to get me behind the wheel of a new car. So, is GM a manufacturing or a service company? Well, a bit of both, I guess. Still, we might be inclined to consider it primarily a manufacturing company. Perhaps 80% to 20% manufacturing to service or 70-30. We can debate that back and forth. Let us take a look at another iconic example. Is General Electric a manufacturing or a service company? Dishwashers, refrigerators, jet engines, locomotives? That's got to be a manufacturing company, right? For sure they provide services also, but perhaps 80-20 or 70-30? Here is an excerpt from GE's 1997 annual statement. By any measure, GE is today a global service company. Okay, when a company has reached 33.3 to 66.7 manufacturing to service, or 1 is to 2, it's a safe bet to label it as primarily a service company. That was in 1998, and the trend has only been towards more services. How about this other company? Life insurance? That's easy, a service company for sure. Do you recognize this baby? Gerber. Aren't they the ones that manufacture the goop that generations of babies have drooled over? As you can see, it is hard to find any company that you can neatly classify as a pure manufacturing or a pure service company. Indeed, such labels are often quite meaningless and even misleading. Instead, we need to think about a whole continuum to accommodate the various combinations that are prevalent. Let us say we look at the automobile industry in terms of this manufacturing service continuum. We might choose a position close to the manufacturing side, but not at the extreme end, given that some services are also provided. But really, such a view is incorrect. It can be a meaningless exercise to try to position an entire industry on the continuum. Take, for example, the restaurant industry. No doubt that is clearly a service industry. But wait, don't they also have to produce the food? Doesn't that count as manufacturing? OK, let us move the position a little bit down to the left. For argument's sake, let's say 2080 sounds fine. So can we now conclude that this position adequately represents the restaurant industry? Absolutely not. Let us say I go into a fast food restaurant and order a burger, some fries, and a soda. A cheap meal perhaps, but I get all the food I want to satisfy my hunger with bonus calories for free. A place to sit down and eat it, and with restroom facilities thrown in. Now consider how much of my money went for the employee's captivating smile and conversation, or for the ambiance of the setting, or for the clean restroom. And how much of my money went for the actual manufactured food? Smile? Ambiance? Are you kidding me? Okay, let's say a large portion of my money went towards the manufactured product. Instead, say I go to a fancy restaurant. The moment I step in, I realize I've come to the wrong place. This place is positively grand. The carpet is so plush, I almost trip and fall. But it's too late to retreat, so I decide to go with the flow. The host, in a fine tuxedo, escorts me to a table, fawning over me like I was a VIP. 
The fine tablecloth matches the flowers in the vase. A violinist at one corner of the room plays soothing music. At the other corner, a pianist is waiting in the wings for his turn. The chandeliers are fascinating. The silverware is actually silver. The menu has fancy, unpronounceable items, or must be in various foreign languages, no doubt. I glance cautiously into my wallet, then pick the cheapest item for $92. The waiter, in a tuxedo of course, brings the item and places it on the table with a swirling, wave-like motion. He should be in the circus. I look at the plate and can't help thinking it's a piece of art, so tastefully decorated. I see two pieces of lettuce, a slice of avocado, and what's that there? Two olives? After duly admiring the artwork, I gulp it all down and then proceed straight to the fast food restaurant down the street for some real sustenance. Now tell me, how much of my $92 went for the lettuce, avocado and olives? And how much for the tuxedos, silverware, chandeliers, violinist, pianist? Would you put this restaurant at the same spot on the manufacturing service continuum as the fast food restaurant? Does it make sense to lump the entire restaurant industry into one spot? Clearly the fast food restaurant would be much farther down to the manufacturing side than the fancy restaurant. So now we are trying to locate each company on the continuum rather than an entire industry. But even that doesn't make too much sense. Let us go back to the fast food restaurant. At the counter, the employee asks me for my order, enters it into the register, takes my payment, completes the transaction, gives me a receipt, and then serves me the food when it is ready. Meanwhile, in the back I can see another employee preparing fries. She opens a package of pre-cut fries, places it in the fryer, sets a timer, turns over the fries every once in a while, takes out the finished fries, puts them into small cartons, and stacks them. Consider these two processes. The employee at the cash register provided me a service, conducted the transaction and served me the food, but did not manufacture the food. Although it is not the kind of service I get at the fancy restaurant, this process is very much on the right-hand side of the manufacturing service continuum. Meanwhile, the employee at the fryer produced the food, but did not serve it to me. This process is not very different from something you would see at a manufacturing plant. A worker takes some materials, places it in the machine, then takes the output and stacks it. This process is very much on the left-hand side of the manufacturing service continuum. Here we can see that in the fast food restaurant, we have both kinds of processes. Thus, it does not make sense to locate the entire restaurant at a single spot on the manufacturing service continuum. Rather, we get a much better sense when we look at the individual process level. At this level of analysis, we can try to figure out, is it more like a manufacturing process or a service process?